finance rules you won't learn in school. What did you learn about personal finance in college? Credit? Investing? Money management? Or did you only take the courses that were mandatory for you to graduate? Well, for most people, these classes were more or less pointless, just like calculus, astronomy, and anthropology. The longer I've been out of college, the more disappointed I am about how much information was not included throughout my studies. The world tells us to go get educated, get a job, and all will be well. But unfortunately, it's not that simple. For you to succeed in the world, you need to know a lot more about money than what school will ever give you. Personal finance forms the backbone for all success stories. To save you from the hustle and bustle of having to learn from your mistakes, our team of experts have compiled a list of 10 most important rules that everyone should abide by to be ahead of the game with their finances. Grab a pen and paper. Here are 10 of the most important personal financial rules you will never learn in school. Before we start, why don't you hit the subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you never miss any of our videos. Let's begin. 10. Buying your first home. You probably heard of the popular statement, if you want to buy a home, you have to save up to 20% of the value for down payment. If you don't, you'll be forced to pay private mortgage insurance, which could really dent your account. What you won't learn in school is that while higher mortgage payments may be painful, the financial trade-off between paying more money now and waiting to save up the 20% deposit could be worthwhile. When we look at the macroeconomic factors in the US over the past decade, the appreciation rate of real estate has really gone up, but the wage levels have remained stagnant. So it makes it unrealistic to start saving up 20% of the home value, as it will only increase drastically over the years. The rule behind this is, if you have the capacity to save the money within at least 5 years comfortably, then go for it. But if it will take you longer, you'll be chasing a moving target as the price increases. 9. Save, save, save. In school, they'll teach you to have at least 10% of your income. But let's be honest here, this isn't enough to retire on. Well, unless you're earning millions. For most of us with a regular paycheck, a decent savings percentage will be about 25-40%. to We're not saying 10% is entirely useless, it could be a great starting point to build that savings muscle. In order to save more, reduce your expenses and unnecessary costs. Instead of buying that cup of coffee every morning, put that money in a savings account with a better interest rate. 8. Emergency Fund You may have never heard of an emergency fund from school, but you're lucky you have us to teach you about it. Recent statistics show that up to 40% of Americans don't have the funds to cover an emergency of $400. This is an alarming statistic that only shows how people disregard the importance of an emergency fund. What if you lost your job today? Would you have enough money to cover your costs? The golden rule is to have 6 months of expenses saved up somewhere, but we suggest that if you can make it more, the better. 7. Budgeting Basics Budgeting is quite important in life, yet you won't hear anything about it in school. Sadly, not understanding the basics of budgeting while in school can leave you disadvantaged right after graduating, especially once you move out. Not having knowledge of how to manage bills and create the distinction between wants and needs can lead to one enduring one hardship after the other. Everyone needs to know how to plan a lifestyle that is financed by earned income. This includes understanding how to plan for all bills, but still ensuring there's enough left for necessities, such as groceries and savings. But let's face it, as much as budgeting is important, no one really likes tracking every single penny they use. What you can do instead is what we refer to as tactical budgeting. This involves creating budgets and plans over a long period of time. For example, you can identify what you need every month and create a budget with the needs, wants, and respective costs over the next six months. From the plan created, you can then separate the amounts into different accounts to ensure you don't spend over your budget. Then, occasionally, you can refer to your list to stay on track. 6. Compound Interest The power of compound interest is possibly the best kept secret. The one thing every young person has an advantage over everyone else is time. While they may not achieve their financial goals instantly, they have an upper hand when it comes to investing. All they need to do is tap into the powers of compound interest. By setting aside small chunks of money in a high interest account, young people can amass great wealth that will compound over and over again through the years. To show you just how important compound interest is, here's a great example. If someone gave you two options, the first choice is $3,000 and the second is a penny that doubles up in value every other day. Most people would choose the first choice, right? You probably did too, but if you do the math, but if you do the math, the second choice would be worth $10 million after 30 days only. If that's not enough to convince you to start taking advantage of this incredible opportunity to grow your wealth, then I don't know what will be. 5. Secrets of Credit Most young people right after getting their first credit cards end up maxing them out. 
They then end up with a life full of debt, where they're forced to pay up huge chunks of interest rates, and in some cases, this results in late payments that could adversely affect them. What most people don't know is the importance of credit scores and maintaining a great credit history. But they would probably be aware of the secrets if schools paid more attention to training them on this life skill. Here's what you need to know. Your credit score is one of the most important parts of your financial health, and it generally determines your financial position as an adult. With a proper score, it's a lot easier to purchase a house, get a car, get a business loan, and makes it much easier to achieve other milestones in the future. We can no longer ignore the importance of credit. Everyone needs to know how to build credit and have a proper score all the time. Here are a few pointers on how to achieve this. 1. Get a credit card. Most people think getting a credit card is a mistake, but it is actually quite important in building your credit score. Let me give you a good example. So, I have a friend called Kevin. Just like some people, he avoided getting a credit card for most of his young years, after graduating from school. Doesn't sound like a big problem, right? But when he started looking for a home to buy and a car, he couldn't get any loan approved because his credit statement hadn't been established. Here's how it works. When you get a credit card and use it, financial institutions record all your transactions and interest payments. Based on your efficiency, they'll assign you a score to your name. Now when you go looking for a loan, that score will determine the loan amount you can receive and the interest rate. 2. Always pay your debt in time. There's no other way around this. If money is due today, make sure you pay it today. 4. Rules of insurance. If there's anyone who's depending on you financially, then you need to get life insurance. This could be your child, spouse, or parent. It is better to get a term policy rather than a life one as you get coverage whenever the need arises. However, if no one depends on you financially, end the policy to save on money. In addition to life insurance, get insurance for other aspects and assets you own. This includes your car, home, expense assets, and health. You can also get umbrella insurance, which covers different policies and guarantees a discount if obtained from one insurer. Take your time to get different rates and the features available before choosing a company to insure with. 3. Taxes Taxes are such a broad topic that is hardly ever discussed in school. It's important to understand how they work if you want to be on the right side of the law. Before you get your first paycheck or make any sales from your business, learn how to calculate the tax rate and find out how much money you'll be left with. This will help you determine whether a job offer will meet your financial needs and what the appropriate pricing strategy for your products or services will be. Luckily, there are plenty of online calculators that will do the dirty work for you. They will show you the gross pay, the amount payable in tax, and the amount left in your account, also known as the take-home pay. For example, a salary of $35,000 a year in Manhattan, New York, will leave you with about $26,399 after tax deductions. Also, pay attention to the marginal tax rate that affects your raise. For example, a raise of $35,000 to $41,000 a year won't give you an extra $500 a month, but $345. Make a habit of preparing your tax returns yourself. There's a lot of misinformation and bad advice out there. Be careful. 2. Guard your health. A hospital visit for an injury like a fractured knee can cost thousands of dollars without insurance. If you're finding it hard to meet your monthly premiums, then what will happen if you end up in the emergency room? You may end up having to borrow money to pay for your medical bills, burdening other people who had plans with their money. Doesn't sound fair, right? If you don't have a medical cover, get one ASAP. Also, taking care of your health can end up saving you a lot of money. This involves eating the right foods, maintaining a healthy weight, regularly exercising, not consuming alcohol and other addictives excessively. You don't want to be sorry, so guard your health today. 1. College debt isn't 100% necessary. Contrary to what everyone believes, that student loans go hand in hand with a college degree, you actually don't need to get one to achieve the latter. 85% of new graduates complain of the heavy school debts and the chunk of money that goes to paying it off immediately after they start working. It's not always a must that you get these loans to pursue your degree. Some institutions, like the Davidson College in Charlotte, help students so they don't end up in debt. Other schools offer great education at a fraction of the private school's tuition fee. You could also attend school part-time, work as you study, enroll in a more affordable school, graduate fast, or begin your journey in a community college. But we're not saying debt-free schooling should be everyone's goal. In some cases, it might be worth it. If you're set to launch in a very high-paying career path, then a few thousand dollars shouldn't get in the way. However, don't establish this debt as the main factor of existing as a college student. There are so many other ways of achieving your career goals. That's it for today. We hope you learned a few things. If you're still here, then I bet you enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. We have regular finance videos that will help you grow abundantly, so stay tuned. With that said, I'll see you in the next one.